Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with the Big JB. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to do a Quest for Glory retrospective. That's right. And the reason why we're standing here in beautiful Seattle is because you and I met when Sierra moved their corporate headquarters up to the Seattle area. That's right. And in fact, Quest for Glory is the game that got me excited to work at Sierra in the first place. So let's check it out. So here we go, Quest for Glory 1, So You Want to Be a Hero. Interestingly, Quest for Glory was originally released as Heroes Quest, but they had to uh, they had to change the name due to a little legal spat. Uh, it was released in 1989, the EGA version, uh, which was 16, count them, 16 colors. They did a VGA remake in 1991. Now, the one in 1991 was actually my first exposure to the Quest for Glory series way back when. I went back and played the EGA version, and you can see by the graphics in it that it just is not that great. It's a little hard on the eyes. The thing that these games had to rely on back in the day was good storytelling and interesting game mechanics. And that is something that they managed to do in every one of these games really, really well. However, the VGA remake, in my opinion, is still one of the best of the entire series. You play as the hero of Spielberg in Quest for Glory 1. Uh, you get to pick, as with all games, whether you want to be a fighter, a mage, or a thief. In fact, you can mix and match however you want. I'll tell you one thing that's awfully fun is playing a thief with magic, because uh, you can sneak around and take things from the shadows. It's just, it's really, really cool. In the Quest for Glory games, not only can you choose the statistics that you start with, but in the game, you can actually level up some of those skills. For example, if you don't put any points into climbing, um, you can actually level up your climbing skill by climbing by trying to climb a tree, trying to climb the wall. It takes a while and your character gets exhausted, but you can do it over and over and over and over again. And that is one thing that is a recurring theme throughout these games is that if there's a stat that you want to build, you have to try and build those stats as you would in real life. If you want to get better at climbing in real life, you got to climb. Uh, if you want to improve your strength, you got to do things that's gonna, that are going to improve your strength. So that's very much the same as it is uh, in these Quest for Glory games. Quest for Glory 2 Trial by Fire, released in 1990 by Sierra Online, um, also an EGA version. So, in Quest for Glory 2 Trial by Fire, you have left the town of Spielberg, which is where you were fighting in Quest for Glory 1, as the hero of Spielberg, and you are going to the land of Shapir. And it is a world of, or an area of uh, deep deserts, Arabian theme. It's very cool. You arrive, in fact, on a flying carpet. So it's got that whole kind of um, Arabian Nights sort of feel to it. Um, the one thing that is a downside and can be difficult for uh, gamers who haven't played these old games is the typing interface. Uh, there is the requirement that you actually have to type in the things that you want to do. So now, if you can imagine this, there was a group of people that did not have uh, a mouse driver, so they had no mouse in DOS. So they had to control the entire thing with the arrow keys and typing in commands. And if they wanted to see what was in the room, they would have to say, look and hit enter. And it would tell you what you see. And then if you wanted to look at something specific, you would have to say, look, man. And it would tell you what the man looks like. Uh, and so you'd try all these different commands. The funny thing is in the manual um, that you used to get with the game is it would tell you kind of all the different commands that you could use. So you had to do that while you were playing the game. Uh, and I, I like that there's still that charm because I remember uh, having done that uh, when I was when I was playing it. Um, but it is it does it is a detractor for me honestly it is a detractor in, in how much I enjoy the game every time I've played the game uh, the series through I've always sort of rushed my way through trial by fire because it's really painful uh, for me <laughs> to look at that there are some good laugh moments and and as with the rest of the series the puns continue from the first game on to the second game uh, and they have these sort of running gags in the game too so great storytelling they've got that sense of humor and again you can level up your character you can customize the character and you can really get involved in the story. 
Adventures Quest for Glory 3 Wages of War. This takes takes place in a uh, sort of blended African Egyptian kind of feel. Um, you start off uh, leaving the land of Shapir as the son of the Sultan um, with all the riches and stuff that you gained and the renown. You earned again the title hero, which is your whole quest uh, is to get the, the title hero and your quest for glory. And so you travel through a portal from the land of Shapir to the land of Tarna. And Tarna, like I said, is that Egyptian sort of combo, Egyptian-African feel to it. Uh, the, the city of Tarna uh, is run by the Liontar people. And they are in charge of everything there. And they have a council. And when you show up, you learn that your character uh, is supposed to. You can kind of figure out that the fact that your character is supposed to help stop a war. Uh, the thing I love about the game, again, is the graphics you can see, even from Quest for Glory 1, the VGA remake, to this VGA uh, game, Quest for Glory 3, that, again, they were working with the palette. They were developing and learning new things that they could do with the colors, new things that they could do on the screen. Um, the interface, actually, is one of my favorites. If I'm honest, Quest for Glory 3, while held as one of the weakest of the series, is actually one of my favorites. Um, I like the game mechanics. Um, um, although there are parts of it that are a drag. For example, you have to travel um, from your city to different points on the map, and it can take a long time to travel. And again, it's all about that realism. Like I said about Quest for Glory 1, where you actually had to climb if you wanted to improve your climbing skill, it takes time to go from the city of Tarna out to the village of the Simbani people, for example. Um, and so the sun will set while you're out traveling. You can create, you know, you can set up a camp. You start a fire if you don't want to get eaten at night. Um, and, and that takes time. But it can be very frustrating if you know you have to go back and forth. There's a lot that I really did like about it. For example, if you wanted to talk to somebody, if you wanted to introduce yourself, you would click the lips on yourself and that would be um, your cue to greet somebody that you're playing with in the game. And you actually improve your communication style by doing that. And by improving your communication style, you actually can get better deals, uh, negotiate for, for uh, less price. And that's the other thing that Quest for Glory 3 had that none of the other games have had is the ability to haggle, the ability to bargain. If your communication skill is high enough, you can actually haggle people down and pay less. Therefore, you've got more coin in your pocket. And if you're a thief like I played, that is what you want. After my experience with the VGA version of Quest for Glory 1, um, when I took a break from college, I hung out with a friend of mine and he had Quest for Glory 3 and I really, really loved playing it. I played it a lot. And those two games are what made me want to work at Sierra. And so there is definitely a tender spot in my heart for it. I don't think it's as bad as some people have said it is uh, out there in the public. So Quest for Glory 3, Wages of War. Quest for Glory 4, Shadows of Darkness, the first of the series to be offered on CD-ROM, published in 1994, originally came out not only on CD-ROM, but also on nine three and a half inch floppy diskettes. Yeah, we were in this interesting phase of time where people still had disk drives and we were moving towards CD-ROM. And boy, let me tell you, remember the calls from people who were upset that all these games are going over to CD-ROM and I don't want to have to upgrade my hardware. Yeah, well, buddy, you play a PC game. You're going to have to get used to it because who that plays a PC game doesn't remember having to modify their computer all the friggin time. Anyway, and boy, let me tell you, uh, making a boot disc for these games, that was awesome. If you don't know what a boot disc is, you're far, far too young. So in Quest for Glory 4, again, you can tell that there's another graduation to a higher level of technology, especially the fact that it came on CD-ROM, the first game that had full speech. The game is narrated by Jonathan Rice Davies. Uh, he would actually read to you what was on screen. Did a brilliant job, just absolutely masterful in the way that he read things. Uh, you stumble and fall over the ancient petrified corpse. When you first start off, you're in the game, you're in this disgusting bone-filled cavern. There's some definitely some things in there that look like H.R. Geiger-inspired pieces of art. Uh, the cursors are animated. This is the first time that they used animated cursors. So when you move your cursor around, the feet, for example, look like they're kind of shifting and, and walking. Uh, the mouth opens and closes and has cute little vampire teeth. 
that was another new thing that they were doing. All of the characters have full speech as well. They did a good job with the voice casting. Again, there's a lot of people that you're going to recognize if you listen to it. If you've watched cartoons or played any amount of video games, you're going to recognize a lot of these voices. The one thing that I find the most irritating about this game is the fact that every time you have a conversation with somebody, it switches into this view where you have the portrait of the person speaking and then their words there. And it's this whole interface. Now, I don't know why it bothers me so much in this game when Gabriel Knight uses something very similar, uh, but it doesn't bother me there for some reason. And maybe it's because I played through the series and it was basically a talking head still on the screen while the text was there and it wasn't flipping you into this view. I, I don't know. There was something kind of jarring about the way that Quest for Glory 4 did it. I enjoy it for what it is. I, I think it's a great um, a addition to the series, I think, to go from an area that is bright like, uh, like an African-Egyptian theme and go into Transylvanian theme is kind of a neat transition because you, you get you know that sort of that different view. Uh, it's a great story. They did some really neat things as the game went uh, through its its process, um, and I think it's a great uh, sort of end piece to the series. Now I say end piece because there was a Quest for Glory Five. Quest for Glory Five Dragonfire released in 1998. It was released just after, not too long after, I left Sierra Online. So keep in mind that when this game came out, Sierra Online was doing as much as they could to release 3D versions of games. King's Quest VIII is another one of the ones that kind of came out around the same time. And it's really interesting because Metal Jesus and I were talking about this time period where you'd almost rather go back and play the old VGA games with their pixel rendering than play this sort of pseudo 3D looking really bad polygon, you know, jumbled together game. But it, it's received good reviews, and if you can get through the terrible graphics, and I keep saying terrible because it's just so hard to look at, um, it, it could be an interesting run through. I had a hard time finishing, I'm not going to lie. It, it's a little bit after my time, and so the nostalgia isn't there so much for me. Going back through and playing Quest for Glories 1 through 4 is like revisiting old friends. You know, with the exception of the very first... Quest for Glory EGA version. I played every single one of these through at least once uh, and really, really enjoyed every single one of those games. Quest for Glory 5, one of the ones that I wanted to get to even after I had left Sierra, but never quite made it and just doesn't have the same, um, it doesn't have the same draw to me. And as I played it, just doesn't have the same appeal. It was too much of a departure from the original games with the, the interface and everything else that it does. The storyline seems like it's good, uh, but it's just too much, it's too different for me uh, to sort of put it in that same category of revisiting an old friend. All right, well that is our retrospective on the Quest for Glory series, man, good job. Thank you, I had a great time doing it. It was so neat to go back and play some of those. Like I had mentioned in the video, it's uh, it's like visiting an old friend. And uh, interestingly, my son, who's 14 years old, was sitting next to me and kind of watching me play, going through some of the hint guides, helping me walk through, kind of co-pilot thing. And it was interesting to see what stuff he was interested in. Liked huh. the story, liked how it played through, but as soon as we got to any of the repetition, <laughs> oh my gosh, he was out so fast. Now, did he mind the, uh, the, the text interface and those really old ones? I think from a history perspective, he was like, huh, that's cool, bye. You know, so it's time for ice cream then. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Well, we would love to know if you played the Quest for Glory series, what is your favorite? Right, and if you never played the Quest for Glory series, what adventure series did you like? Yeah, we'd love to know. Post a comment down below. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing. We'll see you next time. Take care. If you are a fan of Sierra or maybe old PC games, well, I have a bunch of videos on my channel that you probably would love. I post a video every week, so go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.